Greetings once again, dear friends. Welcome to another episode of Bodging and Building. Uh, this one, this one was a pain. This really got away from me. I had an idea. It didn't work, but uh, yeah, you'll see. As you can see, I got a lot of different kinds of skulls and I decided I was going to make something to use some of the skulls. I decided what I was going to do was I was going to make up some totem poles for like leading into an orc camp or an orc hunting area. Uh, so I started off with some dowels and I cut them down to size, getting them in scale kind of with a, a warhammer orc I have here because sometimes I sub in warhammer uh, minis in, into my D&D campaign. cut down six to give me six totem poles. Uh, I would remove one of them to make a much larger one because I had a bigger skull. Uh, so I used a tube from the inside of my tin foil uh, to make up the sixth one to mount the larger skull to. I hacked into the dowels to give them some texture that would pick up some dry brushing later on and to make them look like they had been trees cut down and, and hacked up by axes and, and things, not a perfect uh, cylindrical pole. Here's the tube I mentioned earlier, I just imagined this to be a much larger tree they cut down for the purpose of mounting the skull of a larger piece of prey or a larger trophy on. So next up was just to mount all of my totem poles to a washer, just to give them some support at the bottom. Used a bit of modeling clay just around the edge of each pole just to make it look like um, some earth had piled up around the bottom and that's how they were holding it up. So far, so bueno. Next up was to actually decide what skulls I was going to use. I bought this Halloween skeleton spider from Poundland last year, and I thought the skull on that looked like some horrible beastie that a troop of orcs would very nicely kill and be very proud to mount as a trophy. So this one was a definite. My little craft knife proved a little flimsy for the removal of the skull. So as they say, when hunting elephants, you bring an elephant gun. So to the kitchen knife it was. I decided this little bead skull was quite cool, but the crossbones behind it made it look rather tacky and cheesy, so we'd have to take them off. And then I ended up with these odd, nasty looking flat pieces on the side. So I decided what I would do is I would make this into some kind of demon skull. I got a, a box of spare warhammer bits and I just found a couple of horns in there and decided two horns at the top, two horns at the bottom. This would look like some kind of awesome demon that had come up and been slain. And again, very proud uh, orcs would put the trophy up on display. So with all the skulls picked, it was time to base them all with a nice white and then give it a slap on of the old skeleton horde contrast. I used some wood stain that I'd recently used on a coffee table here that uh, had come up with a really nice colour. So I used the wood stain on the totem poles here, and honestly, this is the point where I wish I'd stopped. They all looked really cool, they looked like wood, especially the tube from the um, tin foil. 
It looked like a tree stump. It was awesome. I should have stopped. But I have this idea in my head of colourful totem poles. And, yeah, I carried on. So here's my little skull gallery of ones I decided I was going to use on these totem poles. All very cool and very different. So here's the plan I had with the totem poles. They tell a little story of how many orcs it took to kill the creature, etc, etc. And I started painting it up. I thought it was a cool idea to have each pole actually represent what had happened to the creature whose skull was mounted on the top. I'm not going to sit and show you me painting the entire thing. We'll skip to a picture in just a second. And you'll see... Oh dear. Oh dear. So this is how they looked, and I think we can all certainly agree with Bill Murray. Does that suck? I know, Bill. I know. I'm sorry. The only thing for it was to white it all out and start again. So I went back to where I was with the wood stain and left it as just wood. And then a new idea occurred to me. And I'm so glad that I actually went down this route, because I think the end result looked awesome. Bit of paint on the ground mounds here just to make it look like mud and then we went with some more dowels and I sharpened them to make them into those sort of defense spikes that you get out the front of the old orc or goblin villages. Roughed them up a little bit with the old craft knife again just so they're not looking perfect they look like they've been hacked up with axes. Uh, super glued them in place and uh, did them all in various uh, designs to make sure they don't just all look uniform and all look the same, uh, just to give a nice bit of variety. And here's what I ended up with. decorate one I decided I was going to use a couple of the spider legs from the same model as the skull came from and we're going to make them up into what looks kind of like an archway uh, behind but I was more thinking just some big bones put on display behind the pole itself. Using the skeleton horde again to make these look like bone I wanted it to be obvious that these were definitely part of an animal uh, that had been used as decoration here. I picture my orcs very much like the stereotypical um, predator being very much taking the skulls and trophies and bones and things and using them in display purpose. I gave all the wooden spikes a sepia wash so it seeped into all the nooks and crannies and showed off where this had been hacked at with the axes. I dipped into my Reaper Minis and found a skeleton archer that I thought looked quite cool just laid down here in front of one of the poles, so I decided to glue him in place there. A friend of mine gave me a little box of Flower Soft, which is really cool stuff to use as grass. Uh, now unfortunately it seems it's really hard to get hold of, but I used a very, very small sparing amount on these and it goes a very long way, so if you can get hold of it I highly recommend it, this stuff's really cool. So there's my skeleton half buried in the grass. Ignore the sandpaper bit there, I was just trying to use it to get the camera to focus. It didn't work very well, but uh, you'll see it better later on. For the big tree trunk, I decided to wrap some rope around it and I would uh, tie in some bones uh, all on display there. This is again just cut up bits of that uh, plastic spider from, from the beginning. So at this point this is how they looked, I added in some white paint just uh, as if the tribe had painted a little bit on the poles, um, but yeah I was really happy with them at this point and then I got a delivery through, but here's uh, just a nice little look at what I'd done so far. So 
as you can see on here, I added in some small flowers that I got through the post. It was a delivery of uh, a few various different colored flowers that I'd managed to find and buy on eBay. Um, very similar to the Citadel grass spruce. There's a couple of them in there as well. Um, it's just a sticky bit on a plastic bag. You peel it off, stick it on. But I thought having the nice combination of some nice colorful flowers mixed in with the death that was so prevalent in these pieces was a nice contrast. So there it is folks, I'm actually really happy with this project considering that halfway through I was really angry and frustrated with myself that I'd messed it all up. But it just goes to show, nothing is irreversible. Make a mistake, you can always correct it in some way. And like I always say, this is definitely good enough for my tabletop. I'm really happy with these. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope maybe you've picked up an idea or two or something, or even just a technique, or I don't know, maybe you've just picked up that you can recover from uh, a bad project. But I hope you enjoyed, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, share it around for me. That'd be great, and I'll see you next time.